Deep in the Victorian goldfield, Cyan covered something incredible. Quartz crystals in colours and shapes you don't usually find here. Hundreds of millions of years ago, tectonic forces fractured the Earth's crust. Today I can hold those fractures in my hand, sparkling with quartz and pyrite. Not all quartz is created equal. In the Victorian goldfields, most of it is dull and milky, but I've found something very different. At first glance, these specimens stand out for their quartz crystals in shades of white, red and black, bristling with abundant golden pyrite that sparkles like treasure. Some crystals have grown so sharply, they look like jagged teeth frozen in stone. Like this one here. Honestly, it looks like a jaw filled with quartz teeth. Don't worry though, it doesn't bite. Usually. Another specimen even resembles a dinosaur skull, with quartz crystals bursting out of the top. What makes these specimens special is how different they are from the typical massive quartz of the Victorian goldfields. Instead of being just a milky lump, here the quartz grew as visible well-formed crystals. Some are small and sparkling, others are sharp and jagged, almost like teeth. Alongside the quartz are striking minerals. Brassy pyrite, golden chalcopyrite, silvery grey stibnite and black tetrahedrite. A copper antimony sulphide that often carries silver. In rare cases, you can even see specks of free gold, though most of the gold here is refractory, locked within the sulphides. But to really appreciate these rocks, you need to quickly understand their story. Between 443.8 to 419.2 million years ago, during the Silurian period, the region these crystals were collected from was covered by a deep ocean. Layers of sandstone, siltstone and shale were deposited by submarine fans, piling up thousands of metres of sediment on the seafloor. Later, intense tectonic forces compressed, folded and fractured those rocks as ancient oceanic plates collided with the edge of the Australian continent. It was during these tectonic upheavals that superheated, silica-rich hydrothermal fluids surged upward through fractures in the crust. Unlike most veins in Victoria that solidified quickly into dull, milky quartz, here the fluids cooled slowly enough and with enough open space that the silica could grow into well-formed quartz crystals. Alongside them, the fluids also deposited sulphides and trace metals, creating the striking mineralized specimens we see today. Like I said before, normally in the Victorian goldfields, the quartz cooled rapidly. The space was tight and the silica crystallized too quickly to develop visible crystal shapes. But for some reason, this area was different. Here, the fractures provided enough open space and slow cooling conditions for the quartz to grow freely into hexagonal crystals. Instead of dull masses, these veins are lined with sharp glassy prisms. The result is a dramatic departure from the ordinary quartz reefs of Victoria, specimens where the mineralogy and crystal growth tell a richer, more complex story. Historically, this ground was worked for gold, silver and antimony. These aren't ores you could pan or crush easily. Most of the gold is refractory, but the specimens themselves are spectacular examples of mineralization. And I'm happy to announce that, for the very first time, you can own a piece of the Ozgeology collection, and with it, a tangible fragment of the Victorian goldfields themselves. Each specimen is sold exactly as it was found, only carefully cleaned to bring out the natural crystal faces and colours. That way, what you hold is the real geology as it formed underground, not something modified in a workshop. Every specimen comes with its own geology and specimen number card, explaining how it formed hundreds of millions of years ago, the minerals inside, and the history of the ground it came from. So when you hold one, you're not just holding a rock, you're holding a chapter of Australia's geological story. These are one-of-a-kind treasures taken from a single discovery pocket, and once they're gone, they're gone forever. If you'd like to hold a specimen born in fire, locked in time and revealed only now, Check out the link in the description or visit the Osgeology website to claim your piece of the Osgeology collection. Each purchase directly supports the channel in the most pronounced way. Every specimen sold helps me get back out into the field to explore, film and uncover more deposits like this one. So by owning a piece of the Osgeology collection, you're also helping make future discoveries possible. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to anyone who decides to purchase one of these. And as always, thanks for watching.